Kerry James, Football in 90. Coach, congrats on third place. Give us your initial impressions of the game. And if you could talk a little, a little bit about the formation you use in these two games and its effect on getting the wing backs higher up the pitch. You know, that's how we got the, the goal today with um, Dexter getting the freedom to get into the attacking third. And in the first game, we also had uh, Greg Lee, even though it was off a secondary, off a set piece, but the wing backs getting the goals. If you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so first of all, I think um, given we played 120 minutes only three days ago, we needed to be clever in, the, in, a, in an approach in Panama because Panama is a, is a really good passive si passing side, <clears throat> move the ball well. Um, so I think tactical-wise, we, we, we played a good performance. Um, maybe not the best game we have played, but I think we showed by this performance that we can, we can play whatever national team in the world and have a chance against them if we play as tactical as we, we did today. So um, going through the game, um, it, was, it was not a game of many chances, but I remember two or double chance for Shamar in the beginning of the game. Um, and Casey had a chance in the early, in early stages as well. Uh, and I think it was the 40, 43rd minute that we had at the first Panama chance, which was a good shot. Uh, and saved by, really well saved by, by Blakey. Otherwise, I don't think he needed to do some magic for us for the rest of the match. Um, second half, similar, we, we, we like last game, we, we fixed a little bit how we defended, so we were not as open. Um, and not many chances in the second half. Nana had a shot to the crossbar. Um, so he, he's showing some attacking skills as well. Uh, but it was mostly set set plays that kind of created some danger for for Panama. But I think overall, really a tactically good game from from the boys. Um, we yeah we again just need a little bit of of more patient building out, a little bit better movements in in building out from the back. Um, but you have to take into account that we are missing a, a, a lot of players that normally play in the build-up a, a big role and we're changing a system so it with having only two training sessions is really hard to be a master in it in in, in two in training, two training sessions um, but i think overall this camp has given us more depth in the squad players really punching in uh, showing that they they want to belong into this starting lineup so uh, Jamaica is, is, is richer after this camp. Tactics, um, it was both because we, we are missing players, we are playing good teams, so we thought it would be better um, to play with three at the back. Um, and also because a, a, a player like Mikael Hector hasn't played much recently, has been injured coming back. Um, Jamal Lowe been injured coming back, so given that we played 120 minutes. It was a really good performance, solid performance from the team, so I'm happy. You had a third angle on your question. What about the wing backs, really? Is it three that they have to play four because of them being back? Yeah, yeah. When, when, you, when you play three at the back, that is, that is just in that system, you have more freedom as a, as a, as a fullback and less kind of balancing, uh, less balancing duties. So, yeah, and, you know, I think I think uh, Dexter was taken for a drug test after the game. No, no left left wing back or a full back goes checks into the left no right right full back checks into this left foot and and blasts it into the crossbar um, in the top corner. So he must be high. The ref, oh, the, 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 the guys thought this guy must be high, but it was a beautiful goal. And and I think this this kid has grown with every game he has played, and establishing himself as a you know as a one of one of the best youngest fullbacks I know coach Arch Bell with concacaf.com congratulations missed you last um, last uh, press conference I, I know I, I'm sorry I was I was on my way to the games <laughs> yesterday um, Jamaica continues to make history uh, as a Caribbean nation in concacaf uh, making the podium in this tournament um, just what does that mean to to Jamaica to 
to in its first Nations League finals to, to finish on the podium? We, we, we talked about it first. It, it, it is just a, a part of our journey. You know, we are, we are trying to build something, not for this tournament. And uh, there is a saying that success is not a destination. Success is not a date. It's a continuous journey to our right direction. So we, we're just working on improving um, this team. Our biggest goal is to try, at the moment, is to try to, to reach the World Cup finals. Uh, but this is a good step to play important matches, to play big tournaments, um, and to play strong opponents like we did. The US and Panama is, uh, are the two of the three highest ranked CONCACAF teams. And, and we showed we are close in this gap, uh, even with, a, with uh, a number of players not with us. So I have to give a lot of credit to the, to the players, the way they, they presented themselves for Jamaica tonight. But just a part of our journey. So of course, we, we got some prize money, so probably JFF has now can, can pay our flight back home, at least. <laughs> OK, coach, uh, Marvin Walters here from Fanside. Uh, it's congratulations on your first time of asking and your finish. Uh, it's evident that your systems are working, 3-4-3 uh, three, three in transition and 5-3-2 in defense. How important is this victory um, heading into the Copa America and the World Cup qualifiers for you and the boys? Tactical, tactically, or just in general, the, these, these two games. In general. Yeah, I think it's psychological. Just to know that we can face teams of this caliber. Again, talking about missing players. I normally don't talk about missing players, but it gives belief in what we are doing. I think that is the, 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 the biggest benefit for, for us and, and the players. The system, I, I never think that a system is the key to, to anything, uh, but we, we do all our same principles, even though the number or movement or, or you know whatever you like to call the 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 formation but we still always have the same principles in defense so but it's good to have tried this for two games uh, and now we have more weapons and maybe we're not as predictable as before when we more or less played the same system same players hey coach john arnold from the getting concaf newsletter kind of following on that I know that as an international manager, you're always trying to find more time, more training sessions. You mentioned trying to put a system in with only two in this tournament. As you look ahead to the summer, it looks quite busy with World Cup qualification, Copa America, but I'm sure you're already planning. How are you going to try and use that time with the, the boys in addition to obviously getting results in these, these games you're playing? What can you learn from these extended time that you're going to have with the players here in a couple months? No, now now we, we, we start to analyze not only the Copa America opponents, the three opponents, and possibly the fourth and the fifth. But we need to start or focus on the World Cup preparation. We play uh, Dominican Republic and Dominica in, in June. So we just have to uh, prioritize first how we're going to play against each, each opponent. And then, then we decide you know, how we're going to spend our time. So we need to see the, the big picture first before we decide what to do. So it's, we have to start from. Um, from the right right steps in in the beginning. So, no, now is our, our work just starts to focus on, you know, our, our next games, and it's a lot of games we know now, you know, what opponents we will be facing in June, and two months is is, is gonna fly by like uh, like a week. So, no, no, we we already coaching staff has already started to work on how we gonna how we gonna do our next two months. Uh, and then it's about planning to execute our our two big tournaments in June, July. So it's uh, it's a lot of planning ahead. Yes, coach. Um, Taryn Davis, Sports DTM. Congratulations uh, with this victory. Um, touching on the Damien Law, three time of asking in the CDM position. Are you comfortable with him playing that new role? The new role of Damien Law. Am I comfortable playing Nana there? Yes. In the yeah, he, he showed in both these matches that he, he, is, he has the engine that we were a little bit missing uh, before. 
So defensively, he, he, he brings a lot of steel into our midfield. And, and I think uh, we, we just need to work more on the at attacking side for him, uh, you know, positioning, etc., where it's best to use him in, in build-ups, etc. But, but he has shown, and he has been kind of the key uh, in midfield for us, so it's probably really nice to be playing next to him. He, he, he takes a lot of dirty work on him, on his shoulders, uh, and once again, he's just he just helps us tremendously with his work rate, with his attitude, because this guy is a is a warrior. So no, I, I'm I'm pleased with him. It's good to have also versatile players. If you want to change the system in, in the middle of a game, you can move a player around. So it's it's also good that he can play more than one position. We're going to take a few virtual questions. We'll start off with Matthew. A good evening, coach. Matthew from Macaron Sports. Hey, uh, hey, you've shown your tactical versatility throughout these two games. And I believe that there is a missing aspect in terms of exposing the fans to just the tactical analysis when media members ask their questions. So my question is, in terms of USA and Panama, if you could just essentially go in depth in terms of the details and what, how, how their style of play different um, is it different between the two teams. Well, it is both is is both uh, good ball possession team. I would say individual skills of the top three four players in US is more in in a short space. Panama is more versatile in attacking, so they, they can go long uh, and they could also go short. So in planning these games in Mexico is not so different from from these two other teams. So we this is why we plan this system of trying to close the middle. So most of these teams like to penetrate through the middle and then go in deep. Uh, but it's a it's a little bit different. I think Panama has, has a, a a lot versatile way of attacking because they have the players. I would I would call them um, uh, honest players that will do all the work necessary. So they will take a long run, they will w win the fight. So it's more spirit uh, and I think more tempo in the in the Panama team. But it's more individual skill in Mexico and and U.S. So you 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 are more thinking about the one we once defending against the US and Mexico, but it's more like defending a whole team against Tam Panama because the, the, the danger come from from everywhere. So, but in, in tactically, I think they play all kind of similar style. We'll give the final question to Andrew Jones. Go ahead, Andrew. Thank you as always, congrats, double H on getting this result. Just wanna ask you about one of the backline performances of Hector Bernard. Vintier, uh, they were just so organized in these two matches. And now with the performances here, um, if you have a full strength squad, uh, and this is a healthy problem for you, uh, would you know what your best 11 is on a given day? Or it's just hard to say with the quality that you've seen from your side these past two matches. Well, my, f my first problem will always be who shows up. Uh, and then we se select our starting 11. Um, but no, it, it, like I said in the opening, in the opening question, I think what this camp does for Jamaica is that there are more people, more players showing that they want to be there and showing that they can be there, um, and and even the players that didn't play a big part in this camp uh, is pleasing. I, I mentioned a guy like. Kaim Dixon, a young Kaim Dixon who came in last last camp and it raised eyebrows when we selected him. I don't think anyone will be surprised if he's selected again after his performance. But football is it's just about moments. Football is about moments. So you get your moment and then you have to be ready when the moment comes. So opportunity and 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 readiness collide. Um and and it's just no, we, we can take a guy like uh, Katematri, who didn't take his opportunity to come with us. Somebody else got the opportunity, somebody else got the playing minutes, and he took the chance, he took the moment and seized it. So we are richer afterwards. And this is, this is just how it is. You, you need to be ready when the opportunity comes. And 
I can say these guys played really well these two games in a in a difficult situation for us. There's a lot of things around us that messes with the with the focus and the discipline, you know, in, in your head. Uh, and they showed, you know, they showed a, a, a brilliant tactical performance today. So, and also against US, uh, didn't deserve to lose that that one. So now we go back to Jamaica, and luckily we have. We brought some big bags with us because we have a shitload of FIFA points to bring home to, to Jamaica. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations. And that wraps up our press conference. Thank you.